Hey everybody, it's Friday. That means it must be Free Tip Friday. I'm Kate Richberg and I'm coming at you live from beadshop.com. Oh my gosh, how did it be the end of the week already? We were just on Facebook Live on Wednesday, Janice and I, I think, and now the week is rushing by. Well, I hope you've had a great creative week. We've had a great creative week around here at beadshop.com. Um, Gracie's behind the camera today. She was all recovered. We missed you, Grace, on Wednesday. She had a little bit of a cold, but she's back in action. Janice is busy, as you guys know, packing and stuff, so we've uh, banished her over into the corner to get stuff done. And we've got Louise, who's doing a little bit of observation, so she's going to start chipping in um, on our filming for Free Tip Fridays as well. So we're all here. It's great to see everybody. Um, so you guys, it's time for uh, hairpins. Are you excited? Are they Very, excited, I'm Grace? Excited. Kathy says yeah. hi. Hi, Kathy. Kita says hello hi, to Kita. both of us. Hello. Um, um, Melanie says good morning. Alyssa says good morning. Good Whitney morning. Says, good hi, morning. ladies. We've got a bunch of other hellos. So get to great. It. All right. Well, without further ado, you guys, I'm going to jump in because I'm so excited to share this great tip with um, wire techniques. It's going to be really fun. We're going to get out the hammers. Cool. Shall we? Yeah. All right. I'm going to oh, come around, you guys. Thanks, Whitney. I appreciate that. I'm feeling better. So thank you, guys. All righty. So this is what we've got going on here. We've got some really cool, um, we've got the hairpins right here that I'm going to share with you. Um, these guys I'm making today out of 16 gauge wire. We're going to take a look at that wire in a second. And you can use these plain, just like I've done here. Or we can embellish these suckers, and I'm going to show you how to do that. It's kind of like a little branchy kind of technique. And then I'm also going to share with you kind of this freeform mm. one that's on a bobby pin. This is something that we did back at the bead shop way back in the day in our brick and mortar store. Janice actually made me a pair of these way back when, and I was looking for them to show you guys today, but they weren't uh, where I usually put them away at, so I'll have to look for those a little bit more so you guys can see them. Um, but they're really fun, easy techniques, really freeform wire. I think we're going to have a good time. So let me get in here, and I'll show show you guys uh, what we're going to use tool-wise. Uh, so, Deb, Deb just asked, uh -huh. where do you get the hairpins or do you just make them? And these them? we're going to make, Deb. We're actually going to make these. It, it's so uh, so much easier than you think. We've got some ready-made hairpins as well that I just, I went to the drugstore this morning before I came here to work and I grabbed these guys too, so I'll show you. The technique is, is the same. But these are a little head hairpins. This is one that I keep in my purse um, and especially when my hair was longer, I could just put it up with my hairpin. So I'm going to show you guys how to do these um, right off the bat. But let's take a look real quickly at some of the tools that you're going to need um, because this one's a little more tool intensive for a free tip Friday. So first and foremost, you guys, I've got my bench block and I've got my hammer. And you've seen me use these before. And of course, all the stuff that we've got here, you guys, you can find, of course, at beadshop.com. Um, the hammer and bench block are really kind of great introduction to hammering and forging on wire. And then over here, what I've got, of course, my flush cutters from Zuron. I've got my wire straightening pliers. And I've got my bent chain, or you can use a straight chain nose plier as well. It doesn't make any difference, whatever works for you. I have also over here, you guys, you know what this is. It's a little simple nail file. I'm going to use that to file the ends of my, of my wire. And then I've just got an assortment of beads. You know, I hadn't put everything away that we had used on our Facebook Live on Wednesday. So I just got those dishes back out because I thought it was a pretty good color palette. But I added some freshwater pearls. And freshwater pearls are, you know, it's great if you're doing like a little hairpin or something for brides or whatever. It's always a fun way to add uh, a little bit of elegance to these. And then I also just grabbed, we had some seed beads. Uh, these are 11 knots, but you can just grab whatever you might have sitting out because sometimes I like a little smaller bead. So that's really it. Um, and then of course, you guys, the wire. This is our 16 gauge. We've got this in stock, our 16 gauge wire. We carry it in the silver and the gold. And you can see how heavy this gauge of wire is. And to make this head pin, um, this is the perfect gauge for that. 
Um, and we also have what I'm going to use to make these little branches or this freeform wrap. You could use any gauge wire you wanted as long as it was fairly thin. I've got 28, you could use 26, which is a little thicker, or even 24, which is a little heavier than that as well. I used 28 because I really liked the way that it made these little twists, and since I twist it, it's heavy enough so it stands up, but it's thin enough that it looks kind of ethereal. Okay? It's beautiful. And Thanks. Faye, I'm on camera. Grace is on camera. She's asking who's on camera. Today. Oh, yeah. Grace is on camera. <laughs> Hi, Faye. I hope everything's going well with you up there. Um, and here's some just some free form. You can really see that 28 gauge here. So 26 or 28 is perfect for this. All right. So let's get started. Let me show you. Let's start by making this base hairpin, you guys. And this craft wire that I've got, it is a silver plate over a copper interior. Can I zoom in? Yeah, you can. Can you Your let me says hi, hi mama? Let me give you a really clean cut with that, Grace. Notice you guys what plier I was using. Can you see that this is the memory wire cutter? The memory wire cutter on heavy gauge wire. Can you see what a flush mm -hmm. cut that gives me? That's another way to really utilize this memory wire cutter is cutting heavy gauge wire. And I don't know if you can see right on the interior there, but it is a copper interior wire. The hammering or anything like this, it's not gonna make it crack or break, um, but it also, this wire is a little stiffer than maybe regular sterling silver wire mm -hmm. might be. So it's a really good candidate for making these pins. I'm sorry to keep interrupting. No, me. let's do it. But I like the you, questions. Faye. She liked the necklace I made her. It's going to be in oh, the episode notes. Yeah, it'll be in the episode notes. It was an epic necklace. So I've cut a piece of wire here, you guys. And just arbitrarily, uh, I, I measured the one that I wear all the time. And about seven inches of wire is perfect. Okay? So I cut that, my seven inches of 16 gauge wire. Then, about in the middle, let me leave this here, which is about three and a half, I'll use my permanent marker, my Sharpie marker, and I'll just make a little mark right there so I know what's about the center. And this, you guys, I don't always do. It doesn't really, you don't have to have it right in the center, because I'll show you what I'm going to do next. We can even out the wire later. Notice I still have my Sharpie marker in my hand, you guys. This is one of those heavy duty ones and it's about a seven millimeter um, width across. So if you have like a, about a seven, no, it's actually a little bit more than that. I think it's about maybe about a 10 millimeter um, diameter here. Um, but anything you find that you can repurpose as a little mandrel, I liked the, the size of this. So I lined my wire up against my Sharpie marker and that's how I make my bend, right? And if I'm not exactly even on the bottom, it doesn't make any difference. Mm. We're gonna take care of that later, okay? So you can see, Grace, that's what I've used to make that, that little loop. Nice. Find something, you know, if you're a knitter and have a big knitting needle or you might have a dowel or whatever you have, repurpose something that you have at home. Now, let's take a look here. See how my little loop goes in? I'm going to grab it there with my, my bent chain nose. You can also grab it with your straight chain nose, but I happen to have my bent chain nose here. And I'm going to come in, I'm not going to measure, I'm just <coughs> going to visually say that I want this to go in and I'll make a little bend. Hmm. Okay? Can you show it again? Yeah, I'm going to do it on the other side. And I'll make it even, I'll come in, I'll come in, and I'll make a little bend. So see how those little bends and that little bend are matching. Notice how my loop maybe is a little bit bigger here than here, but it's really okay. All right, now I'm just gonna make a series of zigzags. One, two zigzags. And can you guys notice how these zigzags aren't that even either? That's okay, doesn't matter. It's character. It does add character. So I'm gonna zigzag. I'm gonna come in, grip it with my plier and zig grip it with my plier and zag, right? I don't know if that's the official term, but that's what I'm calling it, right? So see how I've made those little zigzags? Then I'll just come back down and straighten this out. That's it. 
And I'm going to turn it again. And you guys, if you've never done anything like this with wire before, it's the perfect time to jump in. I mean, who cares? It's just seven inches of wire, you know, and this plated wire is pretty inexpensive. So it's a great way to kind of practice and introduce yourself to working with heavy gauge. So see, I'm just going to kind of zag that out and then bring it together. If I wanted these to be a little more pronounced, I could make it a little, you know, you can come in and kind of fiddle with it a little bit more if you felt like it. There we go, maybe a little more shape there. And then I'll just kind of squeeze it in. Because right now, you guys, the wire is pretty malleable because it's still round. I haven't hammered onto it, right? But to make it stiff, and you can see how this one I've already hammered, see how flat it is compared mm -hmm. to the round wire? That's what makes this hairpin hold its shape. So, let's go ahead and hammer it. Yeah, question. Your mom says, Hey, mama. Remember when Shannon came up to us and made her wedding headpiece? I do. Yeah, so this, what my mom is referring to, we made a great wedding tiara for mm. um, a friend of ours, our friend Janet. Her daughter Shannon was getting married, and we just created a beautiful wedding tiara using this very same technique, just on a larger scale. So I'm going to show you that in a second. But it's perfect for bridal or if you just want to wear a tiara, which I'm really okay with all the time. Okay, so here I've just put my, my little hairpin on my bench block. I'm getting my chasing hammer and I'm gonna hammer. It's gonna be a little loud, but hang, hang in there with me, okay? I'm just gonna do light blows. Let the hammer do the work, you guys, okay? Light taps and see how I'm keeping my hammer in one place but I'm moving my head pin, or my hair pin, rather. And that's so I'm not pounding my hammer all over the place and accidentally pounding my fingers, all right? So if I keep my hammer in one place and move my piece, okay, I'm gonna flip this over. And again, light little blows, you guys, light blows. Straight on, not to the side. We don't wanna mark our wire. Then I'm going to flip this the other way and I'm going to hammer the little legs out. It's a good way to get out any aggression or if you, I don't know. Gita's parrot is hammering along with you. Oh, her parrot! Gita, what's your parrot's name? I can't remember. You can say hi. Let's say hi. You know, we say hi to Eli. We might as well say hi to Gita's <laughs> parrot too, right? Right? Pretty soon we'll be, have a whole menagerie on here, right? So you can see that since I've hammered this. Sally. Sally, that's right. Who's a good bird, Sally? You are. See how nice and stiff that's yeah. gotten, work hardened? But notice also how this one came out a little bit wider than this one. That's okay. You're the boss of this wire, right? Isn't that what I always say? So you tell that wire, hey wire, Ginger is asking if you're using any pressure when hammering. So it's a good question, Ginger. So let me go a little more slowly as I hammer. Let me get a piece of wire here just to flatten it out. So here's my wire. Here's the face of my hammer. And when I strike, I kind of strike it down and then I kind of sweep a little bit. So as I hammer, See how I'm not just keeping it sometimes like this, but if I want to shape or forge the wire, I move my hammer a little bit there. I, I always say, pretty much in anything, especially with jewelry, you want light, repeated strokes of the hammer rather than trying to, whoops, oh. sorry, really loud, right? Really sorry, <laughs> sorry everybody. Grace is all, what did you do? But see that like, but we don't want to scare the wire like I scared you, right? We want to gently, me and the wire, tap it down. So I hope that you see the difference there, sorry. <laughs> I'll just kind of go, bam, well I don't know. It's Friday, I'm ready for some pounding on some hammer and some, on some wire. Uh, Sarah saying her corgi Gilbert thinks that the hammering is another dog barking. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that is so funny. So you can see how one end is a little bit um, longer than the other. So I'll just even everything out. 
and see how I'm going to cover that with my finger so it doesn't fly up and hit me in the head. Now, I want to just show you the length of this, just so you have a reference. About three inches, it's a little bit more, it's maybe about three and a quarter. So from that seven inches, we um, hammered it out, evened it up, you end up with something that's about about three, somewhere between three and three and a quarter. Can yeah. you remind everyone what the wire size is? Yeah, it's 16 gauge, you guys, 16 gauge wire. And then I'll finish, though you could use 18. Uh, this one actually may be 18 gauge, but it might be 16, I can't really tell. But I think that um, 16 is the perfect gauge for this. I'll just come back in after I kind of shaped it a little bit more and pound it up. Now, this is where that nail file comes into play, you guys. I'm just going to come in and I'm going to use that nail file to file these ends. And I use nail files like this from the salon all the time in my studio when I'm metalsmithing. They come in a lot of different grits and they're really, really handy. And they're kind of soft, so they mesh against the end of your wires nicely. And that's it. That's all there is to hairpin. Nice. Super easy. Well, your brother okay. John just caught us in the middle of, but he's leaving now. He's going to oh. watch us later. All right. Well, thank you for jumping in, John. Thank you. So now let's make the embellishments, shall we? Let's go from What's that old hair commercial? From flat to fabulous, or whatever, right? <laughs> I want to say fair to bedazzled. Right, bedazzled, <laughs> exactly. So we could go kind of simple, but let me show you how to make those little branches. It's kind of fun. I'm going to cut maybe like a foot of wire. I don't want to get too crazy on this because too much wire and you won't know, it, it'll be hard to manage it, kind of. Okay? Uh, Trish, I'm sorry, wants yeah. to know would this work with aluminum wire since it's softer? The the pin? Probably not. You can try it. Aluminum, though, when you go to hammer it, I don't think stiffens up an, as much as this plated wire does. But Trish, if you have it, there's no harm in trying. You won't hurt anything by, by trying that out. So I'm just going to come in with my 28 gauge wire. Again, it's about a foot. And you could start anywhere. You could start from the middle and work your way down. But I'm going to start from this end. And I'm just going to give myself a couple of sturdy little wraps like that to anchor my wire. Now, for the end of the wire, I'm just going to bring this wire up and I'm going to give myself a couple more wraps around it to secure it in place. Then I can come in and clip that end away, and it's underneath here now. It's not going to untwist. And then, this is why I like these bent chain nose so much, you guys. Look at how that tightens those suckers up real nicely. And now there's a little bit of a, right, that's not super clean, but it doesn't really matter because there's going to be so much going on here that you're not going to really see that there's like a little bump of wire there or whatever. So just, just go with it. All right, so let's decide what bead I want to put on first. I'm going to grab a bead from my little dish that I used in those boho earrings. Of course, you know what bead it is. It's my favorite bead of all time. It's the shadow, little shadow. I string it on my 24 gauge. Now, I'm just going to make up length. I like the look of that. I'm not measuring. I'm just going, all right, I don't want something that's too long. So I bend the wire. Bam. Look at that. This is still a little loose, but it'll tighten up as we go along. Now I get my fingers and I just twist that wire. See how I've made that little twisted branch? What a technique. Bam. That's it. I'm telling you, you guys are all, I showed up for this, <laughs> right? I know, I'm telling you, it's easier than you think, you guys. I'm making a couple of little wraps. Make as many wraps as you feel like you need space between your branches. Right, now things are starting to tighten up a little bit more. So I'm going to kind of push this down where I want it to go. And see that little crinkle? This is where this wire straightening plier or your nylon jaw plier really comes in handy. 
This is something that I use all the time when I make this kind of a project. See that? How it just straightens it out. While you're doing twisting these little branches, you do want to make sure that your wire is pretty straight. Now I have a true two. Let me put on two. Two true twos. Can I share two comments? Yes, please. Gita says it reminds her of the Tree of Life pendant. Yeah, but very. Janice says that she loves it when you say not to obsess over something because she tends to nitpick. Yeah. Is that our Janice? No, Janice no. King. <laughs> right. I was going to say. Hi, Janice King. How are <laughs> you? I was going to say, is our Janice watching this secretly? So see how I've made a loop there and see how I have those two little beads I'm going to just carefully, I could do this with my fingers, but it might be easier for you to see. I'm just going to, well, maybe I will use my fingers. I'm going to pinch the wire in kind of below there to kind of bring, bring it to a little point. So that gives me something to hang on to. If your fingers don't work as well as they used to, like mine don't sometimes, I can also really gently grab those beads with my chain nose plier to kind of help me get some torque. Whoops, oh. up and I popped one. I was afraid I was gonna do that because I'm rushing. But I still got one on there, so who cares? So this one will only have one. Yeah, Faye says right. she loves your flexibility. Right, so there's my branch. Now let's do another one with two. And let's do two or three maybe with some metal beads so I won't pop them. I'm gonna show you how to do that. See if it's getting wide, push it down. You're the boss. Let's get some of these 11 aught seed beads, some of my favorites. And this time I'm going to put on three. But you could put on, you know, Janice was saying earlier this morning, she goes, Kate, you know, I have a little stash of vintage crystals over here. Wouldn't it be fun to use your vintage crystals on that? And it would. So anything you might have, it's a good way to use up your little beads, you know, that you've kind of been saving for a special occasion. See how I'm making kind of a little triangle or a little pico with those three beads? And I'll just twist and twist. There we go. Sometimes maybe if I grabbed it with my nylon jaw, it wouldn't be so harsh as that metal plier. So see, that helps me. That's a little bit better. So see how I'm just building up my little branches? And you can see I've used a variety. I just keep going. I wrap and branch, wrap and branch. And then what I did was when I came back all the way over here, I just added, and I'll do it here so you guys can see it. I just added a little bead. I think I used a true two or whatever. And you don't have to do this step, but it just covers up your wire wrapping a little bit. But see there how I just nestled it down there? and then brought my wire around. And I'll put, then I put a little shadow because God forbid I don't use a little shadow in whatever project I'm doing, right? Nestle that little shadow right where you want it. You're the boss. Bring the wire around and then finish with the true two. Okay. But this is just how that tiara, that wedding tiara my mom was referring to earlier in the broadcast, this is just how we did it. You know, you could get those little hair bands, um, you know, it's the, you just wrap it and, and embellish however you want to do it. But you can see that looks real nice covered up like that. Or you could even forge your own little like half round tiara band or whatever. But it's a great way to add kind of a fun, kind of meaningful little embellishment, oh. you know, and heck, if you're going to a party or I don't know somewhere fancy or not or just feeling fancy at home put in some fancy hairpins make you make you even fancier mm -hmm. let me show you real quick how to kind of this is very similar but we're doing this on a ready-made pin questions Gracie no 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 one's asked this I just mm -hmm. know I'm going to be asked this mm -hmm. so this was 16 gauge 16 gauge and then the 28 one. gauge okay. thank mm -hmm. you and see you can do the same thing this is a ready-made, one of those ready-made hairpins. You can see I kind of took my design just from mm -hmm. ready-made ones. Here it has those little, those little zigzags. And you could just do your little wrap up here from them. And so if you didn't want to make your own. 
Sorry. Yeah? Suzanne says her wire often breaks when she wraps it. Is she doing something wrong? Yeah, so Suzanne, that's a really great question. So let me show you. I bet this is... And Lorraine says maybe throw a tassel in there too. Oh, Lorraine, by <laughs> all means. You bet. Let me show you. Or Susan, who said tassel? I'm sorry. Well, uh, Lorraine, said, Lorraine tassel said tassel and Susan And said Susan has wire the, breaking. the wire breaking. Let me see if I can find. Do you ever lose the end of your wire? I do all the time. Let's see. There it is. Robin says that Suzanne might be twisting it too many times. Yeah, exactly. There's a couple of things. If you're wrapping your wire, and let's say that your wire gets a kink like this, and see how I now unkink it. But if it has a really harsh kink, see how that kink still stays there? Your wire, <clears throat> pardon me, will get fatigue, metal fatigue. Watch, I won't be able to do it with this one. Let me grab my. But if you go back and forth or you're twisting it too much, yeah. it will break. So you want to make sure that your wire. What I do, the first thing that I do when I'm doing something like this is, with this thin gauge, I'll come in and I'll really straighten this out so it's really free of any little kinks. Then, as I'm wrapping, I'll do it on here, as I come around, see how, remember how when Emily was bead crocheting we were talking about tension? It's the same thing with this wire. See how I'm keeping tension, how this wire is keeping straight as I'm wrapping it? That helps to keep it kink free, if that makes sense. Okay. I have to share another comment. Yeah. It's up your alley. Mm -hmm. Janice Kang this time. Oh, hi, Janice Kang. Says, this is so Frida. It is so Frida. <laughs> it's really true. That's why I thought commented before. So we have a Janice Kang and Janice Kang. That's Janice so Kang is a very um, accomplished knitter and was one of my book testers when I was writing my book. Nice. She was a very accomplished metalsmith. Two questions. Yes. Do you ever kneel your wire before you work with it? And can you harden the wire from swiping it with that tool? Great questions. You do work harden with swiping. So anytime I do this, I'm work hardening that wire. And for this particular technique when I'm twisting, usually I use dead soft wire, which this is pretty close to dead soft. So no, I don't anneal. Okay. I want, and, and if I were making a pin here, I definitely, I, I might anneal if I need to shape it, but even the 16 gauge, I had no trouble shaping it. So see how I've just made that little twist, and then I stop before it it's gets too kinked right here, okay? Let me show you this real quick, like. I've got, I've got just a moment or two, I'll show you this. This one's kind of fun. I'll get, again, that same 12 inches, about, God forbid I really measure anything ever. Another quick question. Yeah. Uh, could the 18 gauge be wire wrapped, then bend into shape? No, I would bend it into shape first, then I'd wire wrap it. I think that the wire wrapping might impede you from shaping it nicely. I think it would, I think, but you can certainly try it and let me know if I'm wrong, which I am often. So see, here's just a regular little head or hair pin, bobby pin. I put my wire through. And I'm just gonna wrap it a couple of times. Now you guys, this could not be easier. I've just anchored. Now, I'm not gonna even pay attention to the beads I'm putting on. I'm gonna put on, I don't know, some. Some beads. I'm going to get this four millimeter fire polish. Can you see okay, Gracie? Yeah, Sorry, I didn't mean to hit the camera. I didn't mean to hit you earlier. Well, <laughs> that's okay. Close quarters. Yes. Tight little. Let me see if I can string them with my right hand so you guys can see them a little bit better as they go on. Some true twos. Whoops, there goes a true two. You know, beads' natural habitat is where? The floor. They don't want to be corralled in. I'm not that good of a beater with my right hand. I usually put beads on with my left hand, but I'm right-handed, so I'm not sure what that means. Uh -uh. 
Lorraine asks if we can do a Facebook Live on different wires and what, um, what you would use in different projects. Yeah, you know, Lorraine, I feel like I've done that maybe a while back, or it might be a free tip Friday, but I'll tell you, we've got a lot of really great wire-centric free tip or um, Facebook Lives coming up, so there will be lots more of that for sure. So see how I just have this random stringing. Now, I'm just going to take two of them, push them into place, and wrap. And drop, I don't know, one. Push it into place, and wrap. You guys, this is really freeform. Get a couple more, push them into place, and wrap. Then, I might wrap a couple of just little plain wraps to secure everything. Now maybe I'll drop three and wrap and the, the, the seed bead or two or three, whatever. Then I'll wrap a few more just to secure it. Whoops, I unwrapped that one, no big deal. And then the pearl's coming, so I'll find a place where I like the pearl to sit. Maybe, maybe there, I don't know. Don't think about this too much. Don't overthink it, I'm so serious. Or else it will lose all of its spontaneity. There we go, these three, maybe I'll just slide them right on top of there. And now I could add some more beads. You can see about how much wire I have left from that little wrappy thing. And I also have this little end that I started with. So that little end that I started with, I'm just going to poke it in somewhere, somewhere where it wants to go. Grab that end, wrap it once, and then maybe wrap it twice, and then call it a day. But that's, you guys, it's just freeform. Just let it, let it be. Let it bead. Let it bead. Exactly. Where's my, oh, I dropped my cutter. Sorry, Grace, I'm going okay. off camera for a well, second. Grabbing my cutter. There we go. Fell on the ground. In the meantime, just want to thank everyone for sharing. Quite oh a my few gosh. Shares. Thanks, you guys. I hope you're finding this one helpful. You know, I was just in a hair, hairpin kind of mood. You know, we had a fun um, kind of wire earring extravaganza on Facebook Live on Wednesday, that boho earring. So it was, I thought it would be kind of fun to do another wire-centric thing. So there we go. And so just end it when you're done. Or if you want to add more wire, poke more wire in and keep wrapping. But you can see it's starting to shape up. Just keep adding your beads until they work for you. So let me get these little samples all back in there so you guys can see them all together. There's our one in progress and our finished one and our one in progress and our finished one so super easy just to reiterate 16 gauge wire 28 gauge wire to wrap around it or you could use 26 even these are ready-made bobby pins just from the uh, drugstore and then just with that freeform wire wrap on top super easy love it and whatever beads you like but you can't go wrong Perfect for, perfect for summer. So I'm going to go around. They says time. that you're keeping her busy, and I have to say, don't be surprised if I come in with a tiara on Monday, Kate. <laughs> oh, awesome! Yeah, tiaras are fun to make, and it's that same, that same little technique. You know, when again, when we had the brick and mortar store, we June, June was that bridal month. All summer, we would make this kind of fun hair embellishments. So. Um, it was really great. Yeah, question, Grace. Really quick question about mm -hmm. the gauge of the pearls. Mm -hmm. What are they typically drilled? You can get 24 gauge wire through them, usually I can. Um, but these, I would say 24 is probably the thickest gauge you could do with these. Um, or 24 is the thickest. Um, but 26 was it would be perfect, 26 or 28 for this technique. Okay. okay. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed it. It got my wire, my wire juices flowing for sure. Um, this weekend, we've got some fun things going on in our newsletter, so you'll want to 
make sure and see that. Um, and next week, I wanted to mention, I'm off to the Bead and Button Show. So you'll see Emily here on Facebook Live along with Grace. They're going to do, they have a great show planned. Emily's doing a beaded, that beaded berry, um, little beaded berry chain, which is going to be great. And then next Saturday, um, I'll be uh, popping in from the Bead and Button Show to give you kind of a little tour. And if you want to come along and see what the show and stuff is all about, it's going to be pretty cool. We'll have more information about that for you next week. So stay tuned to your newsletter and to Facebook Live or to our Facebook page. We'll have it on there. <laughs> Gita says Queen Kate needs to wear her tiara every Wednesday and Friday. Oh, maybe I should. And know. yes, Faye, you're recording from the show at Beat and Button. Yeah, we'll be at Beat and Button in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Cool. So, all right, you guys, have a great creative weekend. Stay happy, stay safe. Thanks for joining me, Kate Richburg at BeadShop.com. We'll see you soon. <laughs>